Okay, okay, okay. What's happening, fam? L.A. Y'all movement still moving. The book is entitled Lessons from a Non-Custodial Father at Amazon Kindle and Create Space. A link will be in the description box below as usual. This video is entitled Question Your Sources for Truth or Your Source of Truth Can Lie to You. You know, Your Source for Truth Can Lie to You. Something like that. What I'm basically saying is sometimes you fall in love with a person and you believe that they're going to give you the truth and they, they're your source for truth. That's your go-to. And you don't question if these people are lied to you or not. And a lot of times, a lot of resentment is, is, is created in society because your source for truth let you down. What do I mean by this? When I was in school, you know, the teachers would teach us all these things. And I like history. So I so when I got to a certain point where I started digging in, I liked history to the point where I would dig into history on my own outside of class. I started realizing that they was lying. So, um, at that particular point, I didn't trust the school system to really give me truth. At first, I was a child and I was blindly going to school to learn. And when I realized we're going to school to learn what they want us to learn, but they don't want to tell us the real stuff. You get what I'm saying? So, there was that point where I would say, and, and I would talk to my grandparents about this, and some of the adults in my family, they were like, this is what you learn in school to get A's and B's. Regurgitate this stuff that they wrote in these books or they told you was the important stuff. But learn on your own the real stuff. Because I would get in trouble by, because I was like, that's not real, like, you know, my earliest memory, Christopher Columbus discovered America. And I, what? Wait, I'm going to go look while he discovered America. And then you're like, what? He didn't even land in America? America, America, Vespucci landed. Then you're like, wait, people's already here, though. Wait a minute. How you? Okay, something wrong with this. You're like, but because then you, teacher, how come it's not the United States of Columbus then? Get in the back. Get, get out of here. <laughs> you know. Because, you know, my source of, of truth, I was like, y'all full of it. You know. Um, I think everybody who, who's been in math has had that moment where they teach you math a certain particular way. And either you can be advanced or you, or, or your brain works in a way where you figure it out on your own whether you take a shortcut through the formula or whatever. And what happens? This is the way you do it. No, you don't have to do it like that. You can do it like this, this, No, 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 you're in trouble. And then it's like, wait a minute. If you're the math teacher, and you mad at me for doing this math problem differently, but it's right. Okay, once I learned, it to, once I learned to do it your way that you got in the book, and that's cool, but then I do it my way. If we get the same answer and I learn how to do both ways, you should be cool with that. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't have an issue with me having different ways to get to the, the, the thinking outside of the box per se, or thinking ahead of the class. Cause maybe I'm thinking in a way that may be three, four chapters ahead that you haven't got to yet, you know? So you question these people's truth, you know, you do it all the time. You know, I, and, I've, and I've, I've all, and the older I get, the more I learn, the more I question, you know, why, why would you tell me something like that when I was young, knowing that I would grow up knowing that you was, you was full of it and I was dead wrong. And, you know, it made, it made me look at the process of education in a completely different fashion. Um, religion. When I was young, I had a um a picture Bible. You know, it's like it's like Bible, but it's like the comics. And I like comic books. 
So I read the whole Bible. That's actually how I read the Bible. Because it had the pictures, the story, like it had the it had the verses and all that stuff in it, but because it was like a comic book, because the Bible is full of stories and allegories, it, you know, you can put it looked like this, it looked like this, it looked like that. So when I when I went through it, I just went through it, you know. And it's crazy because for anybody who read the Bible, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of pages, right? So it's a big old picture Bible, though, because I wasn't a kid, kid like a preteen, teenager, something like that. So it was one of those kind. Um. So as I get as I got older, you know, people pastor said, pastor said, and God said, and and it and this means this, and these you know, the church is your source of truth for right and wrong. No matter what religion, you know, church, mosque, whatever you want to call it, right? And because I had read it, I started to have questions about the people trying to tell me truth. Because I started seeing people who were, you know, read this part, read that part. And I started realizing they were talking about things out of context. So when, and I didn't know at the time that you have to study, you know, theology or whatever. So when I realized that people go to school and study the Bible, and then they get in front of a congregation of people and blatantly say things out of context, for their own benefit to get a rise out of people to get money out of their pockets. I had I wasn't cool with my sources for truth anymore. I would go to, to, to church and sit in the back pew, uh like in the corner chair, like like in, in the corner of the back pew, and do like this. Cause it was a clock in the center in the back. And I would get to about 11.55 and I would leave and walk home to go watch the game at 12 because I was tired of the BS. Um, and even and as I grew older and, as became, and became an adult, it was like, it got worse because you got adults looking for truth, looking for something real to make them whole. And... You have these people in these positions telling these people things that are out of context and these people are wondering why their lives are so disheveled and they got to go back week after week after week after week. It's because for one, you wasn't, you haven't read it for yourself. And for two, you blindly trusted somebody and then people's hopes and dreams get shattered when they find out Past ain't as good as he said he is. Oh, first lady ain't as good as she said she was. Oh, oh, they, they, they was talking all this God stuff, but I seen him in a different light doing something that was so ungodly, you know. And then you 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 question your your source for truth because you realize they lie. And it's weird when you lie lie on God to get ahead. It just it really throws people off, right? And it builds a resentment. That's why you got a, people, a lot of people who don't like church people. Because of, you're supposed to be a beacon of light in general, but guess what? The whole religion is marred in hypocrisy. And when you start learning what you, the quote-unquote truth, and you start realizing that people are um, manipulating truth, it doesn't, it doesn't end well. The last one I'm going to talk about is family. You know, um, family is as your first real um, introduction to your sources for truth. And when you're kids, you look up to your family members. And you feel like, just like pastor could do no wrong, they could do no wrong. And, I, and that's where it really starts because... Uh, I think when a family lets you down, then you look to the school system as a child to pick you up. And if, once they let you down, then you look to church and to God. And then once they let you down, you're probably just like a prodigal person, right? Just just lost. 
But I think the the family is why I'm ending last because what winds up happening is we, your family is the first people to basically brainwash you. <laughs> and they'll sit you on their lap and tell you all these things about life. And... <laughs> And everybody is such a hero and they look so big to you. And as a child, you don't realize you're diff dealing with individuals who have flawed past and flawed histories. And because you're a child, they can't be all the way real with you anyways. Because there's certain things you may not be able to emotionally handle and understand. And then, But there's some kids who can actually handle it and understand it. But then it's the embarrassment of an adult telling a the child their flaws, right? And what winds up happening is you have children believing one thing about, about the family and then growing up and then becoming an adult and finding out that the family, which was their source of, source of truth, have been lying to them their whole lives. And then it unravels their whole sense of reality. Now you, you're trying to figure out, you know, who am I going to believe if I can't even believe these people? What am I supposed to believe in when these people let me down? You know, and depending on the age, then, like I said, you you lost your faith in your family because they lied to you. Then then you lose your faith in society also. Because think about it. We've seen this with, you know, um, broken families. Oh, we, it, it, everything went left because of this, 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 this. And you got one kid believing all these things, and then they grow old and find out it might it, it was these things, but it was also these things. And a lot of times, you might have one parent trying to look like the good person and demonize the other parent, or you might have one side of the family try to look good and demonize the other side of the family. And these children grow up, and then they they get the whole story, and it, and, and then they like. You were willing to waste my lifetime covering up your shenanigans. And you could have ruined part of my childhood, a part of my uh, adolescence, and part of my young adulthood, and part of my adulthood on a lie because you wanted to look good. Or you wanted to look better than that person. Or that side of the family. And then when... when that's the, the deepest one, though, to me, because what happens is when you're on that end, a lot of times there ain't no coming back because that cripples every social relationship you have from that point on. Because even in school, after a while, you, you get the school might lie to you. You get the church might lie to you. But when the family lies to you, those are the people who are supposed to be the realest with you out of everybody in the world. And when they can't even be real with you, you lose all trust in mankind. And hopefully, hopefully you find people who can mend those broken, those wounds. But a lot of people can't get by that because a lot of people basically got to keep going back to their family and then they resent the fact that they're being around people because they don't have another family. And then some people create their own family and purposely, I'm, you, my family can't be around my family because of what my family did to me, kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So that's just my thoughts on this, this, this thing. So, you know, just let me know what you think. Peace.